all of you fabulous people and welcome back to my channel. I have company today. This is my baby Pandora. Can you say hi? No? She is a five week old red squirrel. So anyways, where were we? I have her hopping all over me. So I wanted to come on today and share with you an amazing, super flavorful recipe for those days when you have no time to make something, but you do have time to get your slow cooker going. And that is what we are going to be all about today. Today I am going to share with you this delicious, savory, sweet, tangy, phenomenal sweet and sour chicken recipe that you can get going in your slow cooker. And I'm telling you, it is something else. It is a recipe you absolutely need to try. So without further ado, and so that I can get my incredibly busy, busy day going, let's get down into my kitchen and get this show on the road. Like I said, this is a delicious, a phenomenal recipe. It is really so flavorful and one I just have to share. So this is just gonna be a quick little video and I am gonna show you how to do it. Do not forget to pop over to my blog. I will put the link in the description below. It'll take you over for the printable version of this recipe. Trust me when I say you want this in your kitchen recipe collection. Absolutely delicious. All right, I'm gonna get Miss Pandora back into her cage. We're going to get down in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to put this recipe together. Say bye, Pandy. Bye. See you in the kitchen. When I know I'm going to have busy days like this, I like to prepare ahead of time and try to think, okay, what can I do for dinner without sacrificing flavor? Because we all know I am all about flavor. And I was thinking of slow cooker recipes and this came to mind, especially since I had chicken thawed ready to go. So um, when it comes to slow cooker recipes, what I really like to do is if it's a boneless, skinless type of a chicken that's going in, I like to mix breast meat and thigh meat together because I really love a good white breast meat of a chicken, but I really love the flavor that comes with the dark meat. So with recipes like this one here, I love to be able to add both of them together. And I am also going to trim up all of the cuts of meat. I'm going to trim up my um, boneless, skinless chicken breast, and I'm also going to trim up the thighs. And I'm going to remove a lot of that yucky excess chicken fat that is on there because I am telling you I have found bones in my boneless skinless chicken breast this time like look at this this is just unbelievable and I really have to cut it up super good because I have the kids eating it I'm eating it too I mean I don't want to choke on a bone but look at that right there big bone and I have to really carefully go through this meat so because I have to do it that way I am also going to carefully remove all of that excess fat off of there um, and as I was saying I have noticed that the price of the meat has gone up when you have to rely on a box store for it, but the quality has also gone down. Have you noticed that in your area when it comes to things like meat and produce that the prices have all basically doubled, if not tripled on some items, but the quality isn't there anymore. I'm noticing my produce goes bad faster. I am noticing chicken that just is not the best condition like i'm disappointed in this because i actually ended up finding a few bones i found a joint in the the chicken thighs like a knuckle joint if you will and those are things that you could choke on and whatnot besides i didn't pay you for that i don't want it i'm paying enough for this meat as it is i would kind of expect it to be better but it is what it is i am in no position to raise my own meat and i must rely on the grocery store if i don't buy it in a farm fresh quantity like half a cow or a pig or whatever the case may be so i'm using the chicken i have from the store and i am just kind of cutting it into cubes um maybe an inch give or take there's nothing precise about this recipe once it's all done i am just going to 
put it in my crock pot. I've got all of my chicken cut up and we are going to set that aside. I need to take a can of um, crushed pineapple and separate the pineapple pieces from the juice. So I'm just going to use a sieve in a um, measuring cup and I'm just going to dump that in there. Now I'm going to actually take the pieces of pineapple and put that into the fridge for later and we are going to use this juice now now another thing that i need to do is get some carrots ready and i like to use those fresh baby carrots that are ready to go that i love snacking on throughout the day especially with some ranch dressing oh my lord such a good and healthy snack um but anyways <laughs> i just am going to cut those up um kind of thin because we all know how Carrots tend to not want to cook in a slow cooker, so the thinner the better. And that is all the prep work that I need to do for now. I can add some ingredients together and get this going. Speaking of slow cookers, can we just talk about this little product right here for a minute? I don't know if you have ever used this or not, but if you haven't and you have a slow cooker, you need to rush right out and get it. Especially if you're one of those busy mama types like I am, this makes life so much easier. You literally open it up, you put the bag in your slow cooker, and you cook your meal in there. Anything. Anything whatsoever can go in your slow cooker, can go into this bag, and these are a heaven sent. Let me tell you, when your meal is done, you literally just take it out and throw it away. Nothing to wash, no mess to clean up. It can go right up on the shelf. I love Reynolds Kitchen Slow Cooker Liners. They are one of my absolute kitchen must-haves because I don't have time to stand in front of the sink all night, and I don't think you do either. If you haven't tried them yet, give them a try. In a separate bowl, I am just going to put those carrots that I sliced up um, right in there. And I am also going to be adding to that some um, dried minced onion. I'm going to also add a little minced ginger. And this product right here is my sweet little secret to how I always have it on hand for when I need it for recipes. Then we're also going to add a little minced garlic, and that is another thing that I keep on hand in bulk in a container like this because it just makes life so much easier. Trust me. I do have fresh garlic, but I have this always too. All right, we're going to give this a good stir, make sure that we get that garlic um, all over everything and also the ginger as well. And then we're just going to dump this right into the slow cooker. It is going to be our bottom layer. I like to use a spatula to add this into the slow cooker because it allows me to scrape the bowl clean, which means I get all of those pieces of garlic and all of that yummy ginger, and that is all flavor that I definitely want inside my slow cooker for this recipe. I'm just going to use my spatula to spread that out evenly, and then I am going to add the pieces of chicken thigh and chicken breast in an even layer to the slow cooker as well. So I gave my bowl a rinse and now I am going to add the reserved pineapple juice to that. I am also going to add some coconut aminos and you could totally use soy sauce. This is just a preference. And I'm also going to add um, some packed brown sugar to this recipe. I am going to give all of that a good stir and then using my spatula again to make sure I scrape all of that yumminess out, I am going to pour all of that over my chicken in my slow cooker. Now I'm just going to pop the lid on it and I am going to turn my slow cooker on. I'm going to turn it on low and I am going to let this run for seven hours. Low and slow is the way to go then I will be able to go start my incredibly busy, busy day. And I just really love my slow cooker for days like this. It just makes meal planning and meal preparation so doggone easy. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, we are down to the last 30 minutes of our slow cooker cooking time. So I am going to use this time to make some rice in my Instapot. It's the only way I will make rice. It comes out perfect every time. Do you use an Instapot to make it? 
I'm telling you, it's the only way. But anyways, I am just going to get some rice rinsed over here. I always rinse all of that nastiness off of my white rice. It makes all the difference in the world. And then I'm just going to dump that into my Instapot. Now, I also keep all kinds of stocks on hand. I keep chicken stock and beef stock, vegetable stock, whatever I need. Um, and that is what I always use to make my rice. And I kind of basically use it to replace water and just about everything. So I am going to add some homemade chicken stock to my um, Instapot as well. And we are just going to set this for three minutes. I'm going to let it naturally release for 10 minutes after that. And then it is ready. So easy peasy, the step's done. I thought my camera was recording the last step to this process, but it actually wasn't. And I do apologize for that. So I'm just going to explain this last step to you. A half hour before your sweet and sour and chicken will be done in the crock pot, you want to add some diced bell pepper. I used a yellow and I used a red because I thought they were super pretty in the dish. Um, and then I also added the reserved pineapple pieces that we had set aside. Um, give that a good stir. And then also I mixed a quarter cup of some of my chicken stock with a quarter cup of arrowroot powder. You could totally use cornstarch. Again, that's just a preference thing. I created a slurry and I also dumped that into the crock pot as well. Give all of that another good stir. Put the lid back on and just let it go for the last 30 minutes. It's going to thicken up. It's going to become this gorgeous, juicy, um, just delicious sweet and sour chicken to put right over this rice. And it is a phenomenal dish. I cannot wait to eat. So I do apologize for not recording it, but that is the last step. I wish you guys could smell my house with the sweet and sour chicken oh my lord i am so so hungry this recipe is phenomenal this is one you're definitely going to want to check out and i'm absolutely going to put the link in the description below that will take you over to my blog be sure to hop on that and go over and get your free printable recipe don't forget it's so full of flavor it is like a flavor explosion and we all know that's what i'm all about so definitely try this recipe and it's ready. Let's eat. I'm just going to make a little bed with my rice and I'm going to pile that sweet and sour chicken right on top of there. It is so hot. It is fogging my camera. But oh my gosh, look at how good that looks. <gasps> Can't wait to try this. I'm telling you, this is a really flavorful recipe. Your family will love this. You will love this. Anybody you make this for will love this. And it is just an absolutely delicious recipe that you truly really need flavorful. to try. You have to make this. You'll love it, I promise. Mm -hmm. mm. I bet you could can this up. Yep. I bet you could can this up. Can it up. That's right. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that super easy, simple slow cooker recipe that is just so slammed with amazing flavor. You really have to try it. It's phenomenal. Company will like it. You will like it. Your family will like it. Don't forget to hop over to my blog. Print yourself off a copy of this. And once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to my channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. My name is Sean Lynn, and I love to share all things homemaking with you. You never know what they're going to be about, so you definitely want to hit that subscribe button and make sure you never miss an adventure with me. Because let me tell you, everything's an adventure. Like right down to having a squirrel in my hair. <laughs> I'm gonna go spend some time with my sweet little girl before she goes back into her cage for the evening. And once again, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys again real soon. Be sure to stay tuned because there's a great January junction coming up. You guys will love it. Bye.
And for those of you worried about my little friend here, she was an orphan squirrel that was rescued. She is too little to be out on her own now, but she will be released back into the wild. She is such a little love. Thank you.